My mom and dad taught me when I was really, really young that we're all given life. I wasn't given a good life or bad life that was going to be up to me. Thank you guys for coming. I'm going to share my story. I was born with arthrogryposis, and I always like to say it just because I can. <laughs> when I was born, the first time my parents ever saw me was 16 hours after birth. And my doctor had already put casts on my legs and arms and a pillow socket to help me develop hips. My mom said she counted every finger and toe to make sure they were all there. Arthrogryposis. I had club feet, clubbed hands, no hip sockets, and I lack muscles and tendons throughout my whole body. I often tell people, I've had almost 40 surgeries. I think it's about 38 or 39. But looking for the good and everything and being thankful for what we have. Not giving up hope is hard sometimes, but we can never give up hope. When I was a child, I didn't know anybody that had the same problems as I did. I was about 20 years old. I had never met anybody with this condition. My doctor asked me if I'd meet this boy. His name was Paul. He was 12 or 13 with the same condition. I got to spend the day with this boy. Suddenly all my surgeries, all the being teased and made fun of meant something because now I was able to help somebody else. And after he left my house, I knew that I'd spend the rest of my life trying to help others. I didn't know what I would do, but I would do the best I could with what I had. I can visit people in a nursing home. I can do speeches now and then or write a book once in a while. There's a lot I can do. I decided that doing speeches would be another way to reach others. Laughter is great for our health. If you can't laugh at yourself, Oh, life is going to be so difficult. My doctor said I could try baseball, and I was so excited. I, I practiced hour after hour throwing a tennis ball against the garage door, and I would beg my coach all through Little League one year to let me pitch. I said, please, let me pitch. And he never would till one of the last games of the season. He said, okay, Ward, you go try and pitch. Well, I struck out seven or eight kids in a row. I said, see, you should let me pitch every game. He said, the only reason you struck all them kids out is because they all thought you were going to hit them with the ball. <laughs> I, I think humor is actually probably one of the most important things in our life. If I'm telling a joke or telling a funny story and it's about myself and I'm kind of, it's self-deprecating in a sense, some people aren't that comfortable with that. I got a great example. <clears throat> If you bend your wrist down as far as you can, that would be a club hand. Well, what the doctors did is they broke my wrist, pulled it up, straightened it. They stuck four or five pins in there. My thumb was in what would be the palm of your hand. So they had to break my thumb and reset it. Well, I didn't have enough skin, so they had to take skin from my growing, or growing and put it in my hand. So now looking for the good in that, I'm going bald now, but I grow hair on the palm of my hand. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Okay, that's kind of funny to me. Most people don't think so. You know, I drew a picture on a piece of paper one day, and I drew all my scars from head to toe, and I called the picture Scar Man. And looking at it, I was actually very impressed. I thought it was funny at first because I, for the first time in my life, I was actually proud of the way I was. We all have those scars. Some we can see and some we can't. Well, from there, I developed a doll, a, just a little doll with all my scars. And I thought this would be a way that I could reach kids. So I began asking everybody I knew who knew how to sew. And, they, and so they would be sewing these blank dolls, little kids could draw their own scars on the doll. And they started getting excited, which made me really excited. If I erase those scars, there's nothing there. Those scars are what enabled me to become who I am. I remember giving a little boy a doll. 
one time and he went and colored it and painted it and made it look just like Spider-Man. <laughs> they make that doll themselves, which is the key to the doll. I just want them to feel like they're so special and so wonderful and everything about them is perfect. All of our scars make us who we are. It's what we do with those scars. I read once to experience life is not to figure it out, but to rejoice in it as it is. My mom and dad taught me that we're all given life, not a good life or bad life, that's up to us. That I can whine and complain and find excuses and blame others, or I can be thankful for what I can do. Did that make sense?